Okay, so um, my name is Ter Barozzi. I'm a professor from the University of Granada in Spain. And thank you for inviting me to this Congress. The title of my presentation is The Social Stigma Surrounding HIV Affected Communities Queer History and Activism in Tom Spanbauer's Writing. Um, it's, that's my email address. It's an eclectic study, so it combines literature with different theories, which I will explain later on <clears throat> because of the limited time that we have. So, um, um, first of all, I want to uh, concentrate on Don Spambauer's concept of dangerous writing and related it to the stigma attached to HIV and AIDS, which is the theme of my presentation. Okay, dangerous writing uh, means um, how to expose our inner life and secrets, which are related to social taboos. It's also a workshop that uh, Spambauer started in 1981 in the United States, in Idaho. And in, it is a minimalistic writing style and a teaching method. Uh, the social taboos I'm talking about, social taboos I'm talking about are suicide, sacrifice, rapes, especially inside the same family, betrayal, racism, disrupting the political establishment, and disrupting cis heteronormativity, uh, heteronormativity. So being queer, talking about HIV and AIDS, which is also connected with secret sharing, and, and um, it's a taboo. And obviously, it's all connected with death and finitude. You also, people with HIV, also living with HIV, also feel ashamed and guilty even nowadays. Anyway, this, this um, dangerous writing consists of investigating a situation that hurts us and that exists, but we try to ignore. It is dangerous because it forces the writer and the reader to explore past painful and, and dark experiences or events, such as fears. It uses the singular eye. So it's similar to um, autofiction, uh, but the writer um, can explore parts of the self or the life not sufficiently dealt with. Um, and of course, the writer can also lie, which is very important. Um, it is about writing about a moment that changed them and about an event that they do not remember well and create a fictional story around it. Basically, it's like going inside our uh, own particular battles, try to understand and especially to forgive. It is an opening and it is closure, okay? So I use this novel in the city of Shai Hunters came out in 2001 as an excuse, um, as a case study to talk about HIV AIDS in the 80s uh, in New York City and related to HIV AIDS nowadays, okay? The story in the novel, which is not the main, the main argument of my presentation, is about Will, the protagonist, uh, a white a youngish man in, the, in his early 30s, who goes from Idaho to New York to look for his uh, native uh, male lover, Native American male lover. Uh, um, and in his search, he forms um, inoperative communities, as well as communities of lovers. I will explain in, 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 in uh, inoperative communities and communities of lovers later on. I know community theory is not well known, so I try to explain in a very simplistic way. Um, uh, they're all connected with HIV AIDS in this case, in the mid eighties, in this case, in New York City. Um, hence they're connected with um, death and finitude. Okay, the main objective of the study is the importance of the interconnection between dangerous writing, quiz studies, and community theory, which I will explain um, further on. Okay, um, I think it's very important to understand the historical context. Um, more than 100,000 people died of AIDS in the, in the eight, 1980s, um, only in the US. Um, ACTAP was one of the main organizations that tried to fight against uh, the establishment, basically the political establishment, and um, queer theory and, and movement are essential tools, tools in the prevention of the medical and social stigma associated with HIV. So what queer theory uh, tells us is that sexual behaviors are the important things and not identities. Basically, what it is important is what we do and not what we are. So we have to remember that from the 80s uh, up to nowadays, there are risk groups in the medical establishment. And these risk groups, as you all know, are usually gay men, trans people, migrants, people of colors, 
um, basically, um, and etc. Basically, already marginalized community, um, which the political establishment and the pharmaceutical companies saw an opportunity to marginalize even more. So there was a stigmatization um, of, of of these people uh, even more. Okay, um, but it's important to um, make a connection nowadays because the antiretrovirals. Um, that actually um, help people living with HIV to stay alive um, can actually, uh, in the West, because in the poor countries, this is not possible, unfortunately. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about um, biopolitics, negative biopolitics, this is one of negative biopolitics. Uh, nowadays, undetectable means untransmittable. So somebody who's, who has an undetectable viral load in their blood cannot transmit HIV. So this is very important. Um, um, Larry Kramer was one of the founder of ACT UP, and it's important to say that in the 80s, um, AZT was um, um, an old um, cancer treatment, a recycled cancer treatment that at the beginning killed more people um, than a, a AIDS itself. Uh, in fact, nowadays it's used in small doses in some um, antiretrovirals, uh, but in the past it was used in high doses and it killed more people than, than the actual uh, AIDS, so uh, that's very important to, to remember. There was um, um, a mass indifference of government, families and society, okay, and there was a stigmatization of the body. Um, so something that has been erased and some truth has been forgotten and replaced. In, and and um, Sarah Schulman actually um, states that the, the living, uh, the people with HIV are still living, or the friends of the people who died of AIDS are still living with HIV, have some responsibilities. Um, um, but, or, but there is this kind of, 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 of mass indifference, unfortunately. I wanted to cite, um, um, a part uh, um, um, from Sarah Schulman from 2012, which actually cites Milan Kundera, and um, which is connected to the HIV uh, AIDS crisis that hit the United States in the 1980s. The first step in liquidating a people is to erase its memory, destroy its books, its culture, its history, then have somebody write new books, manufacture a new culture, invent a new history, before long, the nation will begin to forget what it, what it is and what it was. The world around it will forget even faster. The problem with HIV AIDS is that we forgot all these people actually died of AIDS. Some of them were great artists and they contributed a lot of the social change in our society. So there was also a big gentrification of the, I'm talking about the US now, but it happened all over the West, uh, uh, gentrification of the, of the cities because um, people with HIV AIDS lived in the center of the cities and, and rich people appropriated over the sizes of the house. And we forgot all these hundreds, thousands of people that died who contributed a lot to uh, our rights as queer people and to our arts and, and our communities, especially. Okay, it is important to say the queer theory, we are, then I'm talking about queer singularities, is strictly related to HIV and AIDS. As Jacose said in 1996, um, the most important things are what we do and not what we are. Unfortunately, the political establishment and, and the pharmaceutical companies uh, want to put the accent on what we are. Basically, whether we are gay men or, or even lesbians was considered a risk. Can you imagine? Even lesbians in the 80s were not allowed to donate blood. So um, uh, I know it sounds crazy, uh, but this, this was a way to marginalize people even more. So what queer theories say is that is the behavior that counts and not what we are supposed to be, which is a completely different thing. So um, they invented risk groups, as I said before, I mentioned them, which were actually considered risky for the immunity of our general population. Uh, who were immune? Uh, um, okay, who were considered immune? Of course, they were not immune. Um, white, cis, heterosexual men were considered immune. They were a forgotten group in the pandemic, but in fact, nowadays, 
the, uh, the majority of people have died of AIDS because they never take the test. And when they go to the hospital to take the test, I'm talking about white, cis, heterosexual men in the, in the Western world. Um, they go when the defenses are too low and the antiretrovirals don't, don't work. So it's amazing. They give them immunity, thinking that they say they can do whatever they want. Not so much with uh, cis and heterosexual women, they still consider a group risk. Um, uh, doesn't make sense again, but because they're women, they are considered inferior in our society. But at least they they, they take more the tests than men. Um, so, um, a queer theory is an ancestral intervention in the health science sciences. Okay, because there is still an ongoing social stigma. In fact, people living with HIV are often called the living dead, and the Western culture is obsessed with risk. But I think the risk is also life. We have to take risky lives in order to survive. And thanks to the antiretrovirals, people can survive nowadays. But remember, the antiretrovirals are only palliative. They are not a cure. There's not um, a vaccine for HIV, OK? And there's not a cure for HIV, only the antiretrovirals. OK, so I want to talk about the inoperative community and the community of lovers that started um, in was reappropriated in the 1980s. Uh, non C, which is the picture here on my left, um, um, uh, said that, well, it's died, it's dead, said that um, um, the inoperative community is not associated with work and value of production. And like the community of lovers, which I will explain a bit later on, is open to otherness, secret sharing, um, being spontaneous, antisocial, and mom momentary through recognition and acceptance of mortality. It is based on singularities, basically single people, um, uh, without a common identity. It is spontaneous. It is open to authority, exposed to vulner vulnerability. Through communication and secret sharing, this is very important. Um, it, it, its encounters are imminent, and it comes to terms with death. And death is indissociable from community. We rely on the individual, on the singularity. But again, a singularity on its own, a person on its own cannot really exist in, in the society that we live. So the singularity needs to incline to each other and to form what is called by um, um, community theorists, a Kleinerman. Basically, people need to incline to each other as it happened in the past uh, with people with HIV AIDS, the form community like uh, or movements, social movements like ACT UP. Um, what are the community of lovers? Um, the community of lovers, mainly Blanchot, uh, um, was related to La Maladie de la Mort by Ma Marguerite Durat, uh, The Maladie of Death, uh, written in 1982. Uh, it's formed by friends or couples. It's spontaneous, again, it's vulnerable. Um, its encounters are momentary and self-dissolving. Usually two people, but can be more than two people. I'll give you an example from the novel later on about this. It normally occurs within in an operative community because they're very similar. It's not social, a socially recognized community like, for example, the communities in the past, but even nowadays with HIV and, and AIDS. Um, it's a community without a purpose. It's antisocial, okay? Um, love is experienced through loss. loss. Like Will, the main protagonist of the novel, when he goes to New York City, but well, even when he was living in Idaho, his mother committed suicide, uh, his sister committed suicide, and then in, uh, in New York, he experienced all, all, almost all his friends dying of, of AIDS. So it's, 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 it's experienced through loss, and it, it's, it's got a very short duration, okay? And it's part of marginalized people they, they, but they, these people need each other and they form a Kleinerman. And this Kleinerman is formed, um, it, it's a kind of community in which people can help each other. Okay, from the, the 80s more or less to nowadays, Roberto Esposito also introduced the, the concept of immunity or immunitas in Latin uh, and is still alive nowadays. So, um, what do I mean by immunity and biopolitics? Okay, first of all, let's concentrate on immunity. Um, secrecy, we understand, finitude, we understand. Immunity, uh, where the immune person maintains their 
substance and freedom, it is a political strategy aiming at avoiding the danger of transmission or infection of the common. The common can be a relationship or a virus, in this case, HIV. But think about COVID. COVID only three years ago, um, COVID was used with negative biopolitics. What are biopolitics? Biopolitics, it's biology and um, um, medicine, which uh, mingle with the law. Okay, so with um, with COVID, it was uh, clear that money was more important with people. Well, with HIV, even much, much more, because uh, COVID, anybody can catch it, and HIV, they form these risk groups when we know that anybody can actually um, be infected by HIV, unfortunately, anybody. So um, it's very important to say that immunity is connected with death. A vaccine exposes the body to the infection. But for, for HIV, there is no vaccine. There is no cure, okay? There, there's, uh, with no effective cure, the social stigma endures. Even nowadays, the same social stigmas, the people who live with HIV and die of AIDS in the 80s and early 90s because the antiretrovirals came out in, came out in 1996 still exist nowadays. Nothing has changed. People with HIV are still considered the worst people in the world. We are the worst infection of the world. They are considered worse than people having cancer according to, to statistics. When with cancer you can die, with HIV you can live or you can survive. Okay, but the antiretrovirals, like all medicines, uh, it's a medicine that poison at the same time because you have to take it for life in order to exist. So why poison? Because all medicines that we take for life uh, actually affect our body in all different ways, like our organs. So basically, um, uh, uh, they, are, they are both uh, uh, medicine and positive at the same, and poison at the same time, which is positive because they keep people alive, but negative at the same time, obviously. So uh, uh, Espositov believes that we need more assertive uh, instead of negative um, biopolities, as it was the case of HIV. Okay, so that, that there's a need of affirmative positive biopolitics, where the life is not the object of politics, but the subject. Okay, moving to um, uh, the novel, um, the queer singularities were formed by uh, the main characters, Will, Bobby, who's a girl, Will, Will's sister, Charlie Two Moons, Will's lover, a Native, Native American um, guy, Rose, a drag queen, travestite, possibly trans person, Ruby, um, 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 uh, drag addict, at the same time, very queer person, and Fiona, a pansexual, a pansexual person or woman. Um, I'd like to stress that in the novel, there was the concept of crossing over, which is very interesting and connected to queer theory. When you cross over, when you go to, uh, from um, the mainland and you go to Man Manhattan, you cross over. When you cross over, uh, you're trying to change your identity and with that, your name, and that's what it was a nice nice way of putting it in a novel. But if you are if you are part of these queer identities, you usually face with social enemies. In this case, Will's father, who was the reason why uh, his sister um, committed suicide because she was raped by her father so many times until she couldn't take it anymore. When she, was, she got pregnant at the age of 16, she committed suicide. And in New York, Sergeant White, who was against all people, special people living with HIV and AIDS, and he tried even to, to kill them. Uh, in the in the in the in the it would, it would go to um, um, queer bars or or places where um, 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 uh, drag queens and trans people would go, uh, like the documentary Paris of Burning, which was the first slide that I showed. You know, um, you know the police had lots of uh, problems with that, and this is toxic masculinities, okay, which is very present in the in the in the novel. Uh, in the novel, there's a nice. Um, 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 Port, the shy hunters search for the soul truth within another human heart, which I want to put here. I cannot talk much about the novel, but I can say that here is a picture of it's a scene, a wonderful British series about HIV AIDS in the in the 80s when people were dying of AIDS, unfortunately. And Sin is a song by uh, it's a sin, a song by special boys, but it's a sin. Some people lived it as a sin, uh, lived. Mm, having HIV and dying of AIDS as a sin. 
um, and that were feeling guilty. But anyway, the inoperative, inoperative community that I mentioned before were from Billy, Bobby, Charlie, and Idaho, Will, Rose, Ruby, Fiona, True Shot, and Harry in New York. And I think Harry said that all this family shit, how can you reinvent your life if the original versions will leave you alone? What does this mean? Um, Harry wants to say that his, his family completely abandoned him when he knew he was gay. And when he contracted HIV, uh, uh, they didn't even want, well, he didn't even want to know even less about him and he died of AIDS. So what's the point in, in, in how can you reinvent your life if, you, if your actual family abandons you? So he formed a new family with the inoperative community, uh, community affected by HIV AIDS and with a community of lovers. Community of lovers, I, I, I told you before, love is connected to to death and is very short, unfortunately, in this case of the community of lovers, according to Blanchot and um, Marguerite Duran. Uh, Will and Charlie, and um, Will, Bobby and Charlie. Bobby is Will's sister, so it was a kind of incest. And Charlie has some blood uh, uh, connected to Bobby and Will, we discovered at the end of the, of the novel, so there's incest. Again, they're just writing community theory uh, taboos. Will and his mother, you would think, wow, big taboo, but in fact, they just played at being boyfriend and boyfriend and girlfriend, but they can be considered community of lovers, the mother committed suicide. So Will experienced a community of lovers through death, through loss. Will and Rose, Rose sacrificed, uh, uh, let's say, herself. She was a drag queen. And Will and Fiona. Uh, they became uh, partners, but Fiona lost completely his mind where her dear brothers and all the people around her were dying of AIDS. Will is the only survivor and is the, the one telling the stories. So my conclusions are, this is posed based on, you know, the um, 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 Ryan Murphy um, um, TV series, which is based on life, um, um, Paris is burning, sorry. Uh, my conclusions are the immunity is not for everyone and HIV does not discriminate. We got it all clear, yes? Queer activism is as essential because it says behaviors is what counts and not who we are supposed to be, you know? It's what we do. Uh, can you imagine somebody who recognizes themselves as a gay man who doesn't actually have sex, who are considered uh, asexual? Why should be considered a risk if they don't have sex? And why lesbians should be, should be considered a risk where they have a very low risk of transmission. And negative biopolitics have been implemented where, where, where unfortunately, uh, the, 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 the main uh, subject was um, 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 money and instead of, and, and, and instead of people, that, that should be the subject. Okay, HIV is still considered a threat with a strong social stigma. Uh, again, it's considered the worst of all infections, even of all the, the diseases in the world, even nowadays, when people can live with HIV, with no problem either take the antiretrovirus. Of course, they have to take antiretrovirus for life, but they can have a uh, normal life. Remember, um, if you are undetectable, you're also, you cannot transmit HIV, even if you're sex even if you're sex without a condom. But of course, you have to take the antiretrovirals and you have to be uh, untransmittable, you have to be undetectable. Uh, in, in the other parts of the world, like Africa, South America, blah, 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 when there was the, where people were not divided into risk groups because they affected mainly heterosexual women. Why? Because they were raped by men, basically. Um, uh, people are still dying because they, they can't receive the antiretrovirals produced by the Western world. So. The, the other thing that I wanted to say that the communities in the novel affected by HIV AIDS uh, in the 1980s, I mean 1980s, might be different nowadays, because in the, in the 80s and early 90s, when internet wasn't um, as it is used nowadays, obviously, there were not online communities, people met in person, even if people were dying, um, there was still clinging on each other, we're doing this still climbing, they were still trying to find a community, they were still trying to cheer it up and they were still trying to be together. Something has changed nowadays, something has been lost. Okay, people might survive with the antiretrovirals in the West, not the rest of the world, uh, but if they want to find communities, they have to go online. Do you think that online communities are different in personal communities? I do think so. I think we've lost something throughout history. Um, and um, I think now people are much more isolated. I find it much harder in a small town like Granada where I live. Um, I come from Italy by living in Granada to form 
queer communities, they are all online, and online to me is not the same as the past. So these inoperative communities, which were formed by real person in person in the past, 90s and 80s, I don't think it will be able to survive uh, today. I'm not saying that online communities are bad. Uh, if, you, if you want to say something, I'd like to know your opinion, but this is the end of my presentation. If anybody can ask me questions, I'd be very grateful. Uh, thank you very much.